Oh, good evening, everybody. How is it going?、Uh, I believe most of you are struggling with、uh, reviewing your final. Ah,、uh, I mean, mid semester exams. Oh, it's. I should set it quiet. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, so、uh, this is our last part of、um, uh, of a、uh, live streaming revision session. So what what we're gonna be covering today are the following three things. First of all, do you remember last week? Uh, no, last week, <laughs> last session we have a、uh, a problem left over, which is the difference between. Exponential or all the link between exponential distribution and、uh, Poisson distribution. So some of you are very interested in the relationships between them. Secondly,、uh, which is the key part of today,、uh, central limit theorem or sampling distribution. Okay. We're gonna be talking about sampling distribution, distributions, sampling distributions, and、uh, last but not the least, as this is our final, ah,、uh, the very last live streaming, so you're very welcome to ask questions. So, consultation or Q and A. I knew a lot of you has visit Boris this afternoon, but Boris doesn't didn't feel 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 very well. And、uh, he asked uh, Justin uh, to answer your questions or your, hold your consultations. But anyway, if you still have、uh, any other questions,、um, just ask here. Okay. All right. Uh, so now let's focus on the first topic, which is、uh, the leftover from last、uh, week, ah,、uh, last、uh, stream streaming session. So、um, the example of that question actually、uh, was actually in your week three slides at page、um, number thirty eight. So week three, week three slide, ah,、uh, page. Thirty-eight. It's a question about、uh, the Sydney Harbour Tunnel. So,、uh, if you don't have access to your slides, let's look at the question together. Let's see. It says a toll collector for the Sydney Harbour Tunnel. So, toll means something that collect the fees of passing through that tunnel. And that tunnel,、uh, that toll has observed that the cars arrive randomly and independently at an average of thirty、uh, six, three hundred and sixty cars per hour. So for each hour, the average、uh, car's arrival is three hundred and sixty. But this information also means,、uh, in order to wait. To till the next car to come, it takes on average one over three hundred and sixty minutes. So, um, it asks to use the exponential distribution to find the probability, as well as using the Poisson distribution to find that probability. So, if you don't have your slides on hand, please just uh. Uh, take a、uh, take a screenshot, and then we'll discuss this question together and try and find out the relationships between exponential distribution and Poisson distribution. Okay. All right, now I'm back. Oh ho! So in terms of this question, um,、uh, we can define a random variable in two ways in order to solve this problem. So for problem A. It's asking exponential distribution. So for exponential distribution, we should probably measure、uh, the average waiting time. Okay, so the average、uh, the the waiting time. Sorry, I mean the waiting time. So if we define or let x be or equal、uh, the 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 time or the waiting time. Before the next car's arri arrival, 
next car's arrival. Oh, I'm probably writing too too ugly, so 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 that you can't see clearly. But let X be the waiting time. Uh, waiting time. Before the next car's arrival, so that X will follow a exponential distribution. But in terms of that lambda, we understand lambda is actually the average uh, waiting time or the average uh, time over one, right? So it's the average wait one over average waiting time or the inverse of the average waiting time. So on average, for each one hour, there is expected to buy 360 um, cars. So on average, it takes one over 360 hour to, to have one car to come, right? So that lambda will be 360. So for exponential distribution, um, lambda is going to be 360. And this is based on hours, okay? All right, or you can say 10 seconds, okay? So if you put uh, here as 10 seconds, because I believe uh, one over 360 hours is 10 seconds, right? So you might also define lambda to be one over 10. So it doesn't matter, uh, just keep all those, um, all those, uh, 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 keep the unit uniform, okay? So if I use 360 as the lambda, so keep in mind the unit we're gonna use is hour, okay? So now we're gonna find the probability that more than half a minute, I mean the car, the next car will not arrive within, the, within half a minute. So this is gonna be the probability of X greater or equal to or just greater than half a minute. So for half a minute is how many hours? Oh my goodness, I hate that. Uh, uh, well, well, I regret about this. Okay, can we use second uh, as um, a second as the um, the unit? Is that okay? All right, we will use ten seconds uh, a second as a unit. So lambda will be one over ten. Okay, so one over ten will be lambda because uh, it on average takes 10 seconds for a car to... Now I'm back. Yeah, I can tell it's, it's always loading, right? What about now? Uh, just let me know if everything uh, becomes better, okay? Better? Oh, wow, wow, wow. Cool, cool, cool. Great. Okay, now let's come back and, uh, and continue all those uh, problems, okay? Oh, well, what about if it stays the same? Just try and refresh the page, all right? Uh, it, it will be better, I believe. Okay, but anyway, this will be the result of this question. Now, question number B. Uh, they also asked us to use, they, uh, they also asked us to use uh, Poisson, Poisson distribution to solve this problem. So if we let uh, Y, so in order to distinguish the, the, with uh, this X, I'll use Y, okay? So let Y be um, the, uh, the number of cars the number of cars arrive in half a minute, right? Because we are considering in half minute. So um, for the waiting time of, uh, of uh, 30, uh, no, what is that 30? Uh, sorry. Oh, what was that 30? Sorry, I got interrupted. So I sort of forget what I was doing. Okay, half a minute. So 30 is half a minute. So if, if in terms for 
of the uh, the uh, for the uh, waiting time to be more than half a minute, it basically means within half a minute no car will come, right? So if we let y be the number of cars arrive in half a minute or thirty seconds, then y will follow a Poisson distribution with uh, mu equal to, so we need to think about how many cars will arrive in how a minute, in half a minute. So on average, for every 10 seconds, uh, there will arrive one car. So for half a minute, on average, three cars will come. So here, y follows a Poisson 3. Therefore, if you try and find the probability of x equals zero, which means within this uh, this half a minute, no car will come. So it's going to be uh, uh, x become a very surprised because um, he saw three is carrying his sign. So he hit uh, and killed three. Okay, so you can see the result here is one over one is still e to the minus power of minus three. Here again, it's e to the minus power, uh, to the power of minus three. So uh, in this way, uh, both of the methods can give us the same results. Okay, uh, but only in that kind of uh, questions. Okay. All right. So you can see. Um, the relationships between a uh, the uh, the exponential distribution and the uh, Poisson distribution now, and uh, it's not very uh, not very hard to understand. It's quite straightforward because um, no car arrive in half a minute means uh, the the waiting time is more than half a minute, right? Till the next car to occur. So yeah, here is the result. All right. So basically, we finish the very first uh, problem, the exponential distribution versus Poisson distribution. Now, here comes the K part of uh, today, or even for the first half of the semester, or even the rest of the semester, the sampling distributions, or as known as uh, the central limit theorem, okay? Sampling distributions. Now, in order for us to really understand central limit theorem or sampling distributions, we need to be able to think about, uh, we need to be able to understand all the statistics. They are actually uh, random variables. So uh, when, we, uh, when we talk about the sampling distribution, it's mainly about talking. It's mainly talking about using statistics to infer parameters. Okay, so we use statistics to infer parameters. So we come back to the first day again, right? Using statistics to infer parameters. So for example, we can use sample mean to estimate population mean mu, or sample variance uh, s squared to infer population variance sigma squared or sample proportion p hat to estimate population proportion p something like that so now the first uh, k concept that you need to, you, you have to know is the difference between estimator and estimate Okay, the difference between estimator and estimate. Now, when we look at estimator, it looks more like a tool because it ends with OR over here, right? OR, so it's pretty much like a tool, like actor, um, coordinator, tutor. It's, it's something that in a, a certain position. So estimator is actually described a tool for the estimation. So for in this in here, we can say sample mean, okay? Sample mean x bar is an estimator 
of uh, population mean. Mu. So this is how we understand uh, estimator. Now, how do we understand estimate? For estimate, it actually stands for the result of that estimator or any particular observed value of that estimator. Because <coughs> as I said, <coughs> sorry, as I said before, sample mean or any statistic themselves are random numbers, right? Or they are random variables. Do you remember last week? We learn random variables, right? Okay, so for, for random variables, uh, they must have different possible results. Therefore, any observed result can be called as an estimate of the population mean mu. So for example, if I observe the sample mean, uh, I just make up a number, okay? 6.66, all right? So uh, let's suppose if sample mean, uh, we observe, uh, we take a sample, and we calculate the sample mean to be 6.66. And we can say this 6.66 is an what? Estimate, okay? Estimate of a population parameter or population mean mu. Everyone happy with that? Okay, so sample mean is an estimator because it's, it's a set of rules. What kind of rule it is? It's a set of rule uh, when you take different samples. So you got different elements from the sample and then you add them all together divided by N. So this guy itself is a, a, a tool, a kind of tool that help us to estimate population mean mu. So it's an estimator. And uh, this 6.66 is when we when we have a, a certain sample, okay, we already got one sample and we try and work out the, popu uh, the sample mean, which is 6.66. So this actual observed result is called an estimate, okay? It's an estimate of the population mean mu. And the process of using any statistics to infer parameters is called estimation okay so the the process itself is called estimation all right so it's not only about um, about the definition but also about english so estimation is a process using statistics to infer parameters estimator is a kind of tool or set of rule to assist us in, in, in estimating parameters. And the estimate is a particular outcome of that estimator. All right, so that's the first thing you need to take away from today's uh, live streaming, okay? Estimation, estimator, and estimate. Now, we'll be focusing on estimator in inferential statistics. So for estimator, let's see. The first thing that we have to understand is that estimators are random variables. So they are random variables. Because every time we take a different sample, we can observe a different value of that estimator, right? So for example, this time I take a sample and have a sample mean of 6.66. Probably next time I take another different sample, the sample mean can be 7.02 or 6.48. Or So every time I take a different sample, it will be very different. So, if we are considering back of uh, this random variable stuff from last week, the last week key topic is their probability distribution, 
right? Because for any random variables, there must be corresponding probabilities, uh, a, a set of probabilities corresponding to each value or possible value of that random variable. So as I said, probability distribution is uh, actually a feature of random variable. So for estimator as a random variable, it also has its own probability distributions that we are interested in. And that is called, well, well the name is no longer called the probability distribution, but the probability distribution. Okay, the probability distribution of uh, an estimator or estimators is called, okay, is called what? Sampling distribution, all right? Sampling distribution. So when you are looking at sampling distribution, it's actually the same thing as probability distribution, but it's a kind of probability distribution that describe any estimator. For example, uh, you will also say, you, you will always say sampling distribution of uh, sample mean x bar or sampling distribution of uh, sample proportion p hat. So they are, they are called sampling distribution. All right. So after talking about sampling distribution, we know that for each random variables, they do have their own expected values. They have their own variances. And they also have their own standard deviations, right? So for expected values, all right, for expected values, uh, the, the average of the estimator is also called expected values. For variances, the variance of the estimator is also called variance. However, some many of the students ask about the difference between standard deviation and standard error. So uh, let me tell you the answer now. The standard deviation of an estimator is called standard error. So you can see standard error is nothing but just another name of standard deviation, okay? So uh, don't get scared by the standard error. So it's, it's nothing but um, standard deviation, all right? So this is the second K takeaway of the K terminologies so that you can present your answer in a more, um, in a more professional way. Therefore, now we have estimator as random variables. They have their probability distribution, which is called sampling distribution. The expected value of the estimator is also called expected values. The variances of the estimator is also called variances, but a standard deviation is actually called a standard error. Okay? Okay, now that's all about the K concept. Uh, for today's. So once you really understand those concepts, you may simply uh, just, uh, uh, we may simply just move on to the next part, central limit theorem, okay? Now, you may have noticed in the 2012, 12, as well as 2015 uh, exam papers, you were asked to, to write down or state central limit theorem, right? So you can see how important the central limit theorem is. And it's not only about reciting simple, uh, a central limit theorem, it's more of um, understanding uh, central limit theorem, okay? So now, we'll be looking at, uh, uh, we'll be looking at, uh, Oh, I'll be looking at some questions now. Sorry, I, I haven't noticed your question. So Chen Yujing is talking about, Hi, Tony, how many parts are there for the online revision? Is this the last part? Yes, I promise you this is the last part. Uh, hey, Hesil L, why there are both standard error and standard deviation in past paper? 
because sometimes standard error or sometimes standard deviation is the standard deviation of a sample. But standard error is the standard deviation of sample mean. Okay, sometimes. Eli is asking, do we need to use n divided by n to decide whether the finite population factor should be used to adjust variance of sample mean or if the population is finite, we directly use the factor? That's a pretty good question. As we didn't learn that correction, uh, uh, correction, uh, correction factor, so you don't need to worry about that. You might simply assume all the populations are inf infinite, inf infinity. Yeah, that was just in Aplia, exactly. Okay, so that's all about uh, answering your questions. So if you don't have more questions, uh, we will be uh, we will be focusing on central limit theorem now. Okay. This is the key thing or the key theory that um, supports the theories of the whole semester. Okay, central limit theorem or CLT. Okay, now let us break down this central limit theorem. Uh, well, everybody can recite it from your slides, right? But how do we really understand the central limit theorem? Okay, now let's do it together. All right. So first of all, we will define a sample. So we let uh, a sample x1, x2, blah, 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 to xn. So this stands for a sample. And you may consider why do I use big X instead of small X over here to stand for X1, X2, and Xn, all right? Okay, so let uh, this sample, uh, let uh, this sample be a sample of uh, sample size N, right? of size n. So this is a sample, and the sample size of it is n. And uh, this sample comes from any population distribution, okay? So you can say from any distribution. So this means x can follow any distribution when you are taking sample from x, right? So x1, x2, xn are just n independent uh, observations or n independent repeating uh, experiments on this population x, okay? So from any distribution. And uh, there are two parameters on this uh, po population. One is with uh, a finite. Well, some of you might uh, not quite understand finite, right? Finite means exists, something exists, okay? Because if uh, the, the finite, oh, sorry, so with finite mean, right? Finite mean means the mean is a number that we can count and we know that number, but it's not infinity, right? With finite mean and of finite mean mu and a finite variance of standard deviation, whatever you like, sigma square. So this is the first sentence states, where does the sample come from? Okay, so this sample is a sample of size n from any distribution with a finite mean mu and a finite variance sigma square. Now, here is the condition. If sample size is large, right? If sample size is large, so how large is it? Greater than 30, right? Usually, we believe n greater than 30 is a large sample size. So if sample size is large, 
Now, here's the conclusion, all right? So you can see this theory is stated in three parts. The first part is how we take the sample from any distribution population. And secondly, we, we, we have to make the sample size to be large enough. And lastly, we're gonna talk about the sampling distribution of sample mean, all right? So the sampling distribution so now hopefully you understand what is sampling distribution, right? So it's just uh, the probability distribution of any estimator. Okay, so for sampling distribution of sample mean, therefore the estimator here is just this uh, X bar. So for the case thing about central limit theorem is about the sample mean, okay? So you have to understand sample mean is a random variable. Again, tell yourself sample mean is a random variable. So that's why it has a probability distribution, okay? All right, now uh, the sampling distribution of sample mean X bar is, uh, is followed, uh, not is followed, uh, or can be approximated, right? Can be approximated by what? A normal distribution, okay? By a normal distribution with the mean that equal to the population mean mu and a variance of what? Of uh, sigma square divided by n, okay? So this is the key thing of uh, the sampling distribution of sample mean. Or to make it short, you can write it as x bar follows a normal distribution uh, which has a um, mean mu and the variance of a sigma square divided by n. All right, so you can say this is the whole central limit theorem. Now, here are several things to help you understand uh, central limit theorem better. First of all, again, first of all, we, we need to think about what is the subject of uh, this sentence. It's the sampling distribution of sample mean X bar, right? So the key thing is that it's the sampling distribution of sample mean X bar, but not sample distribution, okay? So many of the students tend to say, if population is, is, is any distribution, but as long as the sample size is large, the sample distribution is normal. This is completely wrong, okay? This is wrong. Let me use a red pen. Let's say this is completely wrong. We can never say sample distribution is normal because sample is it's just a sample. It's not a random variable, right? So we can't say sample has any distribution. So it's the sampling distribution of sample mean X bar. So we are looking at X bar. The sample mean follows a normal distribution, but not sample follows normal distribution, okay? All right, that's the first thing you need to understand. Secondly, we can say as sample means mean, okay, the mean of the sample mean or the expected value of the sample mean is just the population mean mu, which is the population parameter. So in that way, the sample mean can be considered as a unbiased estimator, right? So a unbiased estimator is defined to be if the expected value of that estimator is exactly equal to the population parameter, then that estimator is considered to be a unbiased estimator. 
All right, so that's the second thing. You don't need to know how to derive this result, okay? But just know it, all right? Okay, thirdly, let's look at the variance of sample mean. So the variance of sample mean can be affected by n, right? So the larger the sample mean, uh, sorry, the larger the sample size, The larger the sample size, what's going to happen to the variance? Larger the sample size, smaller the variance, right? Smaller the sample variance. Uh, sorry, smaller the variance of a sample mean, okay? Oh, it's not sample variance, okay? This is the variance of the sample mean. Okay, again, uh, I almost write it as sample variance, but not, okay? So the larger the sample size n, the smaller the variance of the sample mean x bar. So this one describes the variance of uh, x bar, okay? Okay, so it, it actually makes sense because the larger the sample size n, the more precise your estimation of sample mean is, right? So that's why we expect a smaller variance on the, the on this estimator on the sample mean x bar. Okay? So here are some key understandings for you to help you really really understand central limit theorem, okay? All right. So before we move on to any sample questions, I would like to see uh, some uh, questions from our audiences, okay? Because I think I missed a lot. You mean, you mean the MCQ V, that's because A is ambiguous for SD can refer to the standard deviation of, uh, you, you are discussing, right? All uh, right, it's the number of samples or N is the number of samples of an X. Yes, yeah, sample size is not number of samples, okay? It's a sample with uh, n elements, okay? So that is n is the number of elements in one sample. That is sample size. So x1 is the first element in this sample. x2 is the second element in that sample. And xn is the nth element in that sample, okay? Uh, but, 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 but it's different from sample number, which is, oh, you, are, you have a heated discussion here. Great. How many significant number we should use to answer in the mixed term exam? Significant number. Uh, do you mean, um, uh, do you mean the decimal places? Well, I, I believe the question will, will tell you what is the, uh, the, uh, the proper decimal places you need to put into uh, your answer. Okay, so that's all about central limit theorem. Hopefully, after today's revision, uh, before you go to sleep, you if you can't go to sleep uh, smoothly, just try and think about central limit theorem. And I believe you're gonna have a sleepless night. Okay, all right. So just try and um, re re recall central limit theorem in your mind, not to recite, but trying to, to understand it first and then uh, re recall this um, central limit theorem by ourselves. Okay, now let's look at a number of uh, questions regarding central limit theorem, a theorem. Oh, I almost got an Indian accent. Sorry about that. Oh, where's the question? Ooh. Okay, yeah, it's, yeah. Could we, oh uh, yeah, James Williamson is asking the note number one, could we say sampling mean distribution? No, sampling distribution um, uh, is a normal distribution, okay? It's sampling distribution, it's a name. Okay, instead of saying sample distribution is normal, we should say sampling distribution of sample mean can be approximated by a normal distribution or X bar follows an uh, approximately. Okay, I'd better write approximately. 
All right, so hopefully I answered your question, James. Now, let's uh, look at uh, question number five plus one, which is six. Yes, number six. So the duration in minutes of a telephone call to a credit card call center can be modeled by exponential distribution with lambda equals 0 0.2. So what is that? This is what? This is actually the population, right? Now, which of the following distribution can be used to model the average duration of 50 calls to the call center? So that 50 calls, uh, it's larger than 30, right? So we can consider a normal distribution. So the, the answer should be D or E, right? Normal or none of the above. So we will just ignore all of those because it's asking the average duration okay the average to model the average duration of the 50 calls so you can see you got a sample with 50 elements and you are trying modeling the average duration of that 50 calls so this is pretty much when you have x1 x2 x1 starts for the first call duration second call duration to the to the 50 calls duration and they are all random numbers right so we'll be looking at the x bar as a big um uh, uh, big, uh, not a big, but as a overall random variables that follows what kind of distribution, right? So from central limit theorem, we understand that it follow it can be approximated uh, by a normal distribution. However, in terms of the average and uh, the uh, the variance, uh, we should rethink about it. Okay, so for each one phone line, what is the average duration? So the average duration, uh, the expected value of x, right, should be uh, 1 over 0 0.2, which is 5 minutes. So for each call, on average, 5 minutes. So the average should be 5 minutes. In terms of the variance, as we know, the variance, the population variance, well, this can be considered as mu, right? This can be considered as sigma square. Variance of x is calculated by 1 over 0 0.2 square, all right? So for this th term, it becomes 1 over 0 0.04. But this is not the final result, right? Because we understand that x bar has a mean of mu and variance of sigma square over n. So don't forget the variance of x bar it is also affected by the sample size. So again, you need to know the difference between the variance of sample mean and sample variance, okay? So you need to know the difference. Therefore, uh, sigma square over n is one over 0 0.04, and then divided by 50. So what is that result? Oh my goodness. Um, oh, I'm, 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 I'm quite, um, uh, uh, for two, zero, one over two, 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 one, one over two, right? Yeah, it's one over two, four, four, five, it's two. So it's 0 0.5. Okay, oh my God. Uh, I believe my prime, uh, sorry, my, my primary school math is taught by PE teacher. <laughs> because I, I can't do that simple calculations. All right, so you can see this question can be tricky if you don't have a central limit theorem in your mind, but if you're really sensitive to the key numbers like the sample size that is greater than 30 and the average duration, which is the sample mean, right? So and you will notice the right answer should be day, normal 5, 0 0.5, okay? Okay, very good. All right, so that's the first question regarding uh, the sampling distribution. Now, uh, the, the next question, which of the following statements about computer output below is correct? The standard deviation of the sample mean is estimated to be 0 0.4571. Many of you wanted to select this answer, right? So the solution from uh, Boris said none of the above. So why is that? 
the standard deviation of sample mean. So it's simply standard error, right? The standard error of uh, the sample mean is estimated to be 0 0.4571. So it seems cor correct, right? So why the answer says it's incorrect? Probably, um, probably the, the solution is wrong, <laughs> okay? I don't know, uh, cause um, I can't see any anything wrong in this uh, solution. What do you guys think? If you if you let me know this question earlier, I could have asked Boris uh, much earlier today. But I promise you guys, I will ask Boris tomorrow about this question. Okay, I think why it's not A, right? It's it should be A. Uh, who knows? Anyway, forget it. All right, what else? Question eight, it's all about uh, central limit theorem. So what about we move on to a actual calculation question because you don't have any, uh, any uh, multiple choice questions in your exam. So your question will be very likely like be like this, okay? So we'll be looking at uh, question C in question four. And uh, and for B, you can say state central limit theorem. So so you know just state that central limit theorem from your understanding. All right, and um, don't forget it's about sampling distribution of sample mean instead of uh, sample distribution. Okay. Oh, uh, some of you is talking about M MCQ three. So I also noticed that MCQ three is. Uh, not that correct. Let's say, let's say, uh, which of the following statements is incorrect about sampling? Um, if a, it helps to monitor the quality of products in a production process. Exactly. Just like uh, Tony's chicken wings, right? You can never taste all of them or weigh all of them, but um, it, it can be uh, used as a uh, way to provide um, uh, this uh, to provide the quality assurance purposes. It saves time to get the estimates of population parameters. So, so, so the answer was B, right? It saves time. So sampling really saves time. And sampling can help us get estimates of population parameters. What is wrong with this answer? I can't see anything wrong. Please let me know if you can identify anything wrong here, right? Why? Wow, it's, it's, it's right, right? It saves time, right? Sampling will save time for us because we don't need to do census, right? It's cheaper and it saves more time. And uh, it uh, helps us get estimates. Okay, well, C, uh, C, Boris said C is probably not so correct because it gives uh, parameter estimates that are close to the population values. But, but, but uh, most of the time you will get a, get a close uh, value, right? But uh, there, if you are unlucky enough, for example, if I have a population which is one, two, three, four, five, right? And if unlucky, I probably get one and two. So I calculate the sample mean as 1.5, which will be very far away from the actual population mean three. But um, that are close to, but, but in general terms, it's also correct, right? So Boris said, um, Boris said, um, you know, uh, the t this is 2012, right? This is his first time teaching uh, Cubus 5001. So we should allow those exam question papers that have some flaws or some bugs, right? So uh, forgive him. Uh, it's not his fault. It's the fault of the society. <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, so so don't worry about well, trust yourself. Okay, if in your in your exams you have uh, ambiguous uh, questions that you are not sure about it, just believe in yourself and uh, 
yeah, just believe in yourself, okay? Yes. And I also know many of you guys confusing about whether to use normal approximation of binomial probability or to use sampling distribution of the sample proportion, okay? So um, actually, they are the same thing. So later on, I'll introduce that, okay? Uh, but uh, the, the, this one will require the correction uh, factor, so yeah. Uh, we are much luckier than 2012 uh, students. Yes, I, 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 I believe so. Now, uh, let's look at question C, okay? The business analyst of insurance company finds a claim amount of company's inter international travel insurance product has a mean of 560 and a standard deviation of 200. He takes a random sample of 81, so it's greater than 30, claims application. Find the probability that the average claim amount from this sample is between 540 and 600. So is this probability exact? If not, explain why the answer is reasonable. State the theorems that you may use. It's against central limit theorem, right? But anyway, let's uh, look at uh, that question. So Boris is actually very kind because any theorem that you may use and in the previous question states central limit theorem. So it actually saves you a lot of time thinking about which theorem to use, right? Okay, so, uh, well, Emily Wong, thank you for your question, but uh, we will focus on this question first before we move on. Uh, before I answer your question. So your question is for CLT, is that there are many samples, each with n size, and we make a distribution of the mean of these samples. The distribution of sample mean is normal. Uh, yes, it is. But you know what? As a random variable, we don't have to repeatedly do something a lot of times because in reality, we only take one sample, right? But uh, in general, we understand uh, that is how the sample mean is distributed, okay? So you are right in terms of understanding. If we re repeatedly take, uh, uh, take a lot of samples with same sample size n, uh, for example, and calculate the sample mean, and this is the true population mean mu here, right? So you will observe a bar here, and then a here, 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 here. There can be extreme values, extreme values, but most likely it will around the first, uh, around the true value of this population mean, okay? And it can be approximated by a normal distribution. So for every bar here, it's a separate sample with uh, sample size n, okay? Well, it doesn't matter uh, how many samples we have. So for example, if we do have a, uh, well, let me give you an easy example. So if we roll a, if we are rolling a die, okay? So they have six surfaces, right? But by rolling, no matter how many dies you're going to roll, there must be six outcomes, and uh, every, every one of them have a, a, a probability of one over six, right? So before we, it doesn't mean that we have to roll six uh, dice to, to have this probability, okay? So you have to understand what is a random variable x bar itself, before we take any sample, it's a random value. But once we take one sample, it's a particular observed value. So it, once we roll one die, it's gonna be either one, two, three, four, five, or six, right? So then again, for x bar, if we take one sample, it will be, uh, it can be 6.66, right? If we take another sample, it's gonna be 6.78, something like that, okay? So here is how we understand sample mean as a random variable, okay? Thank you very much for your question. I almost forget the student may get confused in understanding why sample means is um, sample mean is a random variable, okay? Or more particularly, if uh, you consider this population, one, two, three, four, five, right? And uh, this is a population. And once you take different samples, for example, sample one, you get two and three, 
and your x bar, this here is should be small x bar, right? 2.5. If you have two and four, the x bar equals three. If you have one and four, uh, the x bar is also 2.5. So you can see every time you take a different sample, you're gonna get a different result. It's pretty much like if you roll a die, every time you may get a different result. So that's how why we call it a, a random variable. But it doesn't require us to take uh, many as many samples to approve that it is a random variable, okay? All right, so that's all about the explanation to Emily Wong. Thank you very much for your question. Now we will be focusing on this question first. So now we'll be looking at the average number, uh, the average amount of claim, right? So we will let uh, X be the average amount of uh, travel insurance uh, uh, product, uh, Insurance product has a mean amount, yeah, claim amount, right? Amount of claim, uh, in blah 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 blah. Okay, yeah, you you know what I mean, right? Just write down the full sentence over here, and since uh, you you should say since uh, n is greater than thirty, and uh, due to you can say due to central limit theorem, right? Central limit theorem or CLT. Um, x bar, oh sorry, let x bar, oh sorry, my bad, we have to define x bar because the average amount is a random variable x bar, right? Let x bar follows a normal distribution with a mean mu and the variance sigma square over n, uh, where mu equal $560, and sigma square, oh well, sigma equal 200, right? The standard deviation is 200. So sigma is 200. And n is 81. All right. So we get to know that, that uh, x bar will follow normal distribution with 500 and 16 mean and the sigma square is oh my goodness 4 ooh, 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 divided by 81 uh this is uh squares dollars but whatever you may just remove those uh, units okay uh in dollars approximately so to show that you really understand it you should say approximately approximately Uh, and again, uh, now, once we know the distribution, the next thing is to try and figure out uh, the probabilities, right? So now we're going to find, so it's pretty much the same as what we done yesterday, uh, the day before yesterday. Now we're going to find the probability of X bar, um, what, between 540 and 600, so less than 600 greater than 540. So um, this is gonna be the probability of x bar less than 600 minus the probability of x bar less than 400, 540. So, so it's pretty much like in a normal distribution, here is a uh, 600 and here is four 540 so that uh, you're gonna use the 600 minus 440 to get the probability inside right so you, you're gonna use this now uh, because we're gonna use uh, uh, the, the the table the the z table so we have to standardize that, right? So in, in, the, in the way of standardization, it's just try and make X bar to be a standardized normal distribution. So we're gonna use X bar minus mean divided by standard deviation. So the standard deviation should be sigma square over N, uh, but anyway, a sigma over square root of N, but anyway, let's see. So X bar minus 560, divided by 400 is 200 over nine, right? 
So we I take a square root of this. It's the standard error, right? Standard error less than 600 minus 560 divided by 200 over 9. 9 is the square root of 81. And then minus, so we know that here it's z, right? And then x bar minus 560 divided by uh, the probability of um, 209 less than 600 minus 560 divided by 200 divided by 9. Well, this process is only for illustration purpose only. So in your exam, you can directly write this as z. Write this as z, okay? Because z is a standard normal random variable. So you can see where Okay, whenever you're gonna use a new letter, you ha you should always define it using like where, right? Where z follows a normal zero and one, right? Zero and one. Therefore, by searching on a table, we are able to find out those two probabilities. So can everybody help me calculate this result and that result? Oh no, this is not. Oh gosh, no no. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Here should be. Uh, yeah, this is 600, but here should be 540. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, here should be four, 540. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so now, now help me, help me out. So this is 40, 40, 40 360, 1.8, minus the probability of Z, 20, 180, 0 0.9, less than minus 0 0.9. Right? Okay. So, uh, let's see if in this uh, paper you're given any statistical tables. Oh my goodness, no tables. Are there any tables? Oh, no tables are given. What a shame. Well, I will check any normal table, okay? Let's see. Normal table. Z. So standard normal table distributions. Okay. Now, oh wow, let's see. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna find out is 1.8. So let's gonna let's find 1.8. 1.8 is here. 1.8 with a zero zero. It's 0 0.96407, 0 0.96407. So this value will be 0. Point, oh, what is that? Oh, oh gosh, 96407, yeah, 96407. Minus, so now minus 0. Point, uh, minus 0. 0.9, let's see, uh, minus 0. 0.900, it should be 00, yes. Okay, yeah, oh, oh. So minus 0 0.9, 0 0.18406. Min 0 0.18, oh, what is that? 18, oh gosh, 406. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. 406. So that you're going to get 0 0.78001. Oh, oh, All right. Cool. So this should be the right answer, but uh, uh, I may be wrong because after all, my primary school math is taught by the PE teacher. So yeah, good luck. Uh, all right. So that's the first thing regarding central limit theorem. We talk about the sampling distribution of uh, sample mean, right? So you can see this is the central limit theorem for sample mean. Now, we also have uh, the sampling distribution of the sample proportion, and that is the students feel struggled most. It's not because it itself is how hard it is, but it's because sometimes you're confusing whether to use normal approximation of binomial probability or using that, um, you know, yeah, that uh, bad boy. Okay, so before that, let's see if uh, we have any questions from uh, the audiences. So Xiao Yi Liang is asking if the B estimated wrong. Well, let's see. Um, what do you mean B estimated wrong? It's same time to get estimates. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean? Sorry about that. I didn't、uh, get your question. Sorry, but can you,、uh, if you like, can you state your question again? James said, "Should we should we plus or minus?" Well, this is for sample mean, so we so we don't need that. Yeah, thank you, Chi Jie Ding. Thank you very much. Now, finally, uh, the last part uh, of our live streaming is uh, the sampling distribution of sample proportion. Sampling distribution of sample. Proportion. Okay. Sampling distribution of sample proportion. Again, the condition for using sampling distribution of sample proportion is uh, if uh, we define the pro population proportion as p. Okay, so this is population. Proportion as p, and、um, so if we take a sample of size n, okay, if we take a sample of size n, and、uh, the number of、uh, success or fail, right, number of success or fail will be X, right. So, let's recall from uh, uh, from uh, from a normal approximation of、uh, binomial probability. Okay, because、uh, in that way,、uh, in, if that is the case, we know that if n p greater than five and n times one minus p also greater than five, we know that this number of success or fail x can be approximated. By a normal distribution with a mean n p and the variance uh n p times one minus p right approximately. So some of you may ask, what is n p? n p is the mean of that uh binomial distribution. n p times one minus p is the 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 variance of uh the binomial distribution. Right, so here is a binomial. If we have a binomial population, and if if we take a sample size n, which is just to repeat the Bernoulli trial or Bernoulli experiment for n times, and the number of success or fail will be following a approximately following a normal distribution like this. Right, so this is what we already have. If you watch the video of、uh, normal approximation of binomial probabilities. Now, actually, the sample proportion p hat. Okay, so sample, sample, proportion, p hat. Is actually another random variable that calculated by x divided by m. Is that right? So if that is the case, if we divide. A n as a number on each x, what's gonna be its mean? So it should be n p divided by n. So we got a mean of p. And again, we divide variance, uh, by n square, right? Because uh, do you remember that rule? A to the variance of uh, uh, sorry, uh, a a a a x equal to a square variance of. X right. So if we divide um a, a random variable by n, the variance will becomes uh this one divided by n squared. So n p multiply one minus p divided by n squared, and thus becomes p times one minus p over n. So this is gonna be um、uh, the sampling distribution of sample proportion. Oh my goodness. They are the same thing, right? So sampling distribution, sample proportion, and normal approximation of binomial probability are the same thing, same, same, same. But why, in 
Normal approximation of binomial probabilities, we have to use plus 0.5 minus 0.5 correction factor. And he, here, if you have noticed, we don't need that correction factor on x, right? Why is that? No reason, guys. This is how the textbook is testing us. Especially, I know you very, very struggle with the, a question in 2012, right? I know, it's here. Okay, look at that. Similar questions, right? Suppose 25 person, random sample 6, at least 20 probability. Uh, account 80 percent, suppose 1,000 people, at least 225 of them. So, so what, what, is, what is the difference between those two questions? No difference, okay? Again, it's, uh, it's uh, again, it's, you know, <laughs> it's the bug from, uh, from the question, uh, from the exam paper. So if I were the marker, I will mark both of those um, methods correct, okay? Because they, you can't tell which um, one required to use what, right? But as I said, this is 2012. This is the first several semesters that Boris taught this unit. So forgive him for doing this kind of uh, uh, ambiguity, ambiguity in, the, uh, in the exam papers, but it's not his fault, right? It's the fault of uh, the university. Okay, anyway. Uh, there are always somebody else can carry the pot for us, okay? Carry the pot. This is the pot, and they will help us carry it. Anyway, okay. So, so they are basically the same question, all right? Uh, so don't bother doing that. And uh, some of you say uh, a binomial distribution is discrete, but normal distribution continuous. Well, yeah, it it's always exists like that, right? So um, if uh, for x, if we deal with x, and we find the probability f greater or less than something, then we have to do a correction. But when it's divided by n, they, they're actually the same, right? It's just a proportion. By dividing x by n, we just change the scale of the data. But um, there should also be this kind of correction on x if we do that in normal approximation uh, using uh, a by uh, on like, uh, on what well, sorry on <laughs> on, <laughs> on binomial probabilities okay so don't worry uh, what, uh, again, uh, remember if the question asks you to do normal approximation or whatever, just do uh, the normal approximation. Or uh, it's in a binomial question, and then you, you just use normal approximation. But if it happens in a central limit theorem question, like question, you can see in question four, it's all about central limit theorem, right? So you're gonna use central limit theorem. But in question three, let's see, it's about a binomial distribution and all kinds of uh, a Poisson distribution or other distribution. So you may just use normal approximation of binomial probabilities. And uh, do you want me to really redo this question for you? Well, just to have a good uh, end, okay? I will just uh, redo this question, one of them. Let's do this, right? Account for 80% of supermarket shares. Suppose 10,000 or 1,000 people random. So we're going to let a P hat be the, uh, the sample proportion of people who like uh, the calls and the uh, worse within that 1,000 people. 1,000 people. Okay, it's a long writing. I don't want to waste my time writing all of those sentences. But, but don't forget to write them down in your exam papers. Therefore, uh, since, right, since uh, MP is equal, equal uh, what? N is 10,000, it's 800 uh, greater than five, N times one minus P equal 200, that is also greater than five uh, due to central limit theorem, right? Due to 
or as central limit theorem, CLT, uh, we have uh, the pay hat follows a normal distribution with the exact uh, mean of 0 0.8, which is 80%, and uh, the variance of pay times 1 minus pay divided by n. n is uh, 1,000. Oh my goodness. Okay, anyway. So this is the sampling distribution of uh, p hat. So if we're going to find the probability of p hat to be at least 225 of them, so it's going to be 225 over 1000. So so you, uh, what I said is if we do want to use um, the correction factor, we should do at if it is at least 225, right? It should be less than or equal to oh at least oh sorry, greater or equal to 200 25 so it should be 224.5 over 1000 but don't bother doing it okay so uh don't worry about that too much because we assume proportion is continuous but uh x is it's discrete okay so that's why we don't do that continuity um correction and again similarly you do a uh standardization you make it a z uh, and uh here again 225 over 10,000 uh, it's it's just 0 0.225 uh, minus 0 0.8 oh we'll mainly shop at other supermarket oh gosh i almost dropped in in the in the um in the pie uh, no 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 uh whatever i don't know the english words for that p hat uh, trap, uh, yeah, trap, trap, trap. So, so uh, yeah, it's at least we'll shop at other supermarkets. So we're talking about uh, if uh, P hat is, um, if we define P to be this uh, 0 0.8, uh, we should uh, have at least 250 is uh, at most, at most uh, 775, right? 775 of them. So it should be 0 0.775 minus 0 0.8, so less than, okay? Uh, uh, divided by the standard error. So the standard error is square root of 0 0.8 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.8 divided by 1,000. So uh, can everybody help me find out this probability? It's 0 0.025 over... 280.16. Oh, this is a good number. 0 0.4. 0 0.4. A thousand. Ten, ten. No way. Square root of a thousand. Sorry, I can't work that out. Can you help me f calculate this number? Yes, yeah, square root of uh, a thousand is uh, disgusting. Is um, ten, ten to the p ten multiplied by square root of ten. So um so uh four oh so four uh, if we fold this zero point four over it it's zero point zero one right no Pfft, yeah just let me know minus one point nine eight really okay this is so small oh yeah so large i mean okay so uh, the probability of z less than uh minus 1.98 so we just find minus 1.98 in the uh, normal probability table so uh, and let's suppose minus 1.98 is correct okay so where is my normal table normal table oh where's the normal table where did i put it Oh, it's here, yes. Minus 1.9, and we had to find 8. So here is 8, right? Here is 8. And let's move it all the way down to 1.9. Okay, it's 0 0.02385. So the final probability will be 0 0.02385. Eight five. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that's all about this kind of question. Okay, so you can say, 
Um, it's nothing but uh, just repeat doing our probability distribution question. But the way we find out the probability distribution of p hat or x bar is from central limit theorem. And later on, the way of calculating probability has no difference uh, as other, uh, other probability distribution questions or just normal distribution questions, okay? So that's all about um, the sample link distribution of sample main and the sample link distribution of sample proportions. So if we go back and say our outline for today, we finish uh, sample link distributions uh, of sample mean, x bar, as well as p hat. So the most important thing is that you need to know what is uh, x bar and p hat as random variables, okay? They are random variables. All right, the last part today is question and answer. So do you have any other questions regarding um, the knowledge from week one to four as well as anything related to Miss semester exam? And thanks for the water. Oh, this is hot water. Where did you get it? Oh my goodness, thanks. Okay, let's wait for your questions. Uh -huh. Hey, uh, Qi Jie Ding, NP greater than five, NPQ, not, not NPQ, okay? It's simply NP greater than five and NQ greater than five. There's no restriction on NPQ because NPQ is the variance of that, okay? Don't worry about that. So Qi Jie Ding is this, uh, all right, so you're mentioning n greater than 30 or not. So it doesn't really matter because I believe the exam question must uh, be able to uh, let you, um, uh, must be able to let you work out uh, the right uh, probabilities okay and again for the normal approximation uh, you will see the numbers are given are extremely large several hundreds or even several thousands so it's it's basically impossible to calculate that by hand okay so that's why uh, they're gonna ask you to use normal approximation so don't don't worry too much uh, Lee and Ignacio is asking which question number again you just answered, i.e. part. Okay, I was answering, uh, I can't remember, let's see. Uh, I was answering question number four, four in 2012, semester two. Question number four, A, B, and C. Um, Will we lost mark if we forgot to plus or minus 0 0.5 in the exam? Again, uh, to be uh, to make it clear, for if the question asks you to use normal approximation of binomial probability, right? You have to plus 0 0.5 or minus 0 0.5, right? But if the question didn't ask and you believe it's a central limit theorem question, then simply uh, use the p hat distribution and do, you don't need to plus or minus 0 0.5 at all, okay? Only plus or minus 0 0.5 when you're dealing with normal approximation of binomial probabilities. Okay, Alina Han is asking, can you go through things about confidence interval? Uh, Lee and uh, Ignacio is asking, is CR included in the exam? Uh, the answer is no. So you don't need to uh, do, um, do uh, confidence interval in your exam. So don't worry about that. I think Boris uh, has told you about it. It's, it only covers um, till up to the sampling distribution. So no, uh, no confidence interval will be tested. So don't worry about that. Yu Zhu said thanks, and you're welcome. As Sylvia is asking when n is less than 20 times of n, uh, Vx is 
Oh yes, exactly. Thank you, S. Sylvia. Uh, that is correct. Um, uh, it's a correction factor. Uh, if we have a finite population, but uh, I believe in this course we'll be only focusing on infinite uh population size. Okay, so don't worry. Okay, any other questions? I see. Yeah, I also I also see that. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, uh, Emily Wong is asking for the binomial correction. If calculate pay less than ten, we use less or equal to nine point five. If we calculate less or equal ten, it's less than ten point five. Are this right? Confuse or plus? The yeah, exactly. Um, the 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 golden rule of using correction factor is that. If uh, this interval, for example, less than uh, 10, if this interval didn't include 10, when you do the correction, you should also not cor include 10. So it's less than 0 0.5. But if this interval includes 10, then your new interval, well, this is not y, x, I'll, I'll say y, y is a normal variable, okay? So normal random variable, x is a binomial, and y is a normal random variable with the uh, same, same mean and variance, okay? So here, you have to in also include uh, 10 in this interval. So it, this also works for greater than something, right? So if x greater than 10, then this interval does not include 10. So it's greater than, it's, it's, uh, it, it will be approximated by the probability of y greater than 10.5. And uh, if uh, x is uh, greater than or equal to 10, you want to find, and uh, p will be y greater than 0 0.9, so that this interval will also include 10. So always think about whether equal sign is there or whether this particular number is included. If not, you must also exclude the number from the, the normal interval. If it does, uh, then you have also to include that in your interval. Okay, so this is uh, this is uh, how it works. Jurassic W is saying tutorial three PPT has a rule of normal. Yes, Yu Si Zhan is asking when will we use normal social mention when we sample this sample proportion. Yes, uh, as I just said, only when the I mean they are basically the same thing. Okay, and it's just a bug or, or a flaw of this course. So um, both of them can be correct theoretically, but in terms of your exam, unless you are explicitly asked to use um, normal approximation, then you use normal approximation. If not, you might just use sampling distribution of sample proportion. And also, you may also see uh, the group of the question, right? So this question is contained in the central limit theorem group, so that you're going to use central limit theorem, right? And uh, for question three, uh, it's in a Poisson distribution group. Uh, or uh, any other distribution group, so it has nothing to do with the uh, central limit theorem. So if that is the case, uh, use uh, binomial uh, approximation. And again, as I said, this is the problem of 2012 uh, exam question itself. So I believe in your exam paper, you will be explicitly told if you're gonna use a binomial approximation, a normal approximation of binomial or the sampling distribution of sample proportion, okay? Don't worry too much about that. Even though the results are different, uh, actually the markers doesn't really care about the result very much. It's all about the process. Jia Wenqian is asking, do we have to know how to calculate optimal weight which minimizes the risk of the portfolio? Thank you very much for your question. I asked Boris before, and the answer is no. You don't need to know that. Any other questions? Okay, it's already 9 p.m. So uh, if uh, you do have other questions, uh, we don't have enough time to answer your questions. I know if probably you are just typing your question, but... Uh, 5, 
four, three, two, one. Uh, no questions asked. Okay, so I suppose no more questions. And again, thank you very much for your coming. And uh, today we have Gary and Felicity as our special guest helping uh, our quality control of the whole uh, live streaming process. If you notice that today uh, our light is much better, that's because we changed to a smaller room. So, so the light will be sufficient uh, supporting the live streaming. So it's just a, a, a meeting room in ABS. And uh, okay, so lastly, uh, good luck um, with uh, your uh, with uh, your, 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 your mid semester exam. Thank you. So Emily Wong, confused a little bit. Is the pay x greater equal 10 equal one minus p? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, Yes, you're right, right? So trust yourself, don't get confused, okay? And uh, yes, wish you the best luck in your exam. Thank you very much for your support to PLG live streaming, uh, live streaming consultations. And I uh, hope to see you before final exams. Bye-bye, <laughs> guys. Okay, it's over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why is Jude talking in English? Because uh, uh, this is the English-speaking campus, right? Really? Yes. So it's like English corner? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So it's... Yes, very yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll stop. <laughs>